Wish we could turn back time to the good old days when the mama sang us to sleep, but now we're stressed out. Wish we could turn back time to the good old days. No, like not at all, because they don't understand what I'm going through. They don't understand like what these days be happening or what's going on. So when a student comes to me who's stressed, um, typically we will try to find out what um, those things are that are causing them to be stressed um, and figure out ways to um, maybe lessen the stress. Um, of course, obviously I can't help with everything, but can um, assist them with finding ways that they can um, manage those stress um, with coping with those stresses and um, discussing ways that they can deal with them. That is a very good question. Um, I think I would um, first and foremost communicate with them um, and make sure um, that they knew I cared about them, that they knew I understood that <clears throat> they were struggling with something or stressed out about something. Um, I guess secondly, I would want them to understand that it's okay, that that's just actually part of growing up. Um, there are some pieces um, about being a teen today that I think are harder like than when I grew up, social media. Um, and so I would do my best to try and understand what was going on with them, um, but also be really empathetic to, under, to make sure they knew that I cared and I loved them no matter what. I either take baths, I talk to my friends, uh, read books, listen to music, that's the one that helps the most. It makes me feel upset when I can't talk to one of my peers about it and I go to talk to my mom about it and she doesn't understand me. It also makes me mad because parents get mad when we listen to our friends. And then when we try to talk to them, they when we try to talk to our parents, it turns out to be a judgment. They start judging us, they start telling us that we're over-exaggerating, or that we're just being so dumb about it. I, I use the analogy sometimes um, when we think about adolescence. It's like all of a sudden somebody goes to you and gives you a bunch of seeds and says, like, all right, now's the time you plant a garden. And uh, you know, maybe you never planted a garden before. You maybe maybe only saw somebody do it, and nobody's given you the tools so that you can do it really well. Um, and so you're gonna screw up sometimes, and it's probably good. you're gonna get dirty, literally and figuratively. Um, and it's gonna be frustrating, and there's gonna be failure experiences along the way. And to sort of know and, and sort of think about it in in the grand scheme of things that hey, I'm trying out things that are important. I'm gonna need for the future, but. Um, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to mess up sometimes and it's going to be okay. And so I think to some extent understanding that piece helps, probably helps adolescents really think about, you know, those experiences a little bit differently so that they aren't so, so stressful. Wish we could turn back time to the good old days when the mama sang us to I'll be talking about how Dominicans and Puerto Ricans impact Island Town and how they help our society, how they bring their culture into America and especially in Island Town, how they bring their kind of style of food, their kind of music, art, and just how so many different styles they bring to us and people in Island Town and how they impact most things that we need. I 
think that our culture is passed down from generations to generations and the things that we celebrate, um, one example would be how we celebrate Noche Buena, how we celebrate Three Kings Day, or the way in which we celebrate Semana Santa, which you know a lot of our children have never been to Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic, but because we as parents celebrate those things, then they learn our culture through our celebrations. There are many things that I feel are influenced just by simply social media and everything like that. And I feel like people should just start thinking for themselves other than what other people think. I mean, it depends because if the, our generation comes up with like a cool new dance and everyone's going to want to do it, it depends on like, what things certain elements look. I don't think I really can. Would you like to change that? I mean, would I like to change it? I guess not necessarily. Well, the start of my family came over here for a better life and see that they could get more opportunities here instead of away over there in Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic. Not saying there's nothing wrong with them, but they want to see we have a better chance in here in the States. So why do you think it increased so fast? I don't know, because most most of them came over here trying to look for a better life and stuff like that. Try to see what's good. I don't like coming to work with nothing too fancy that requires me to do a lot of upkeep because I'm always walking around and I'm a chill person so I like to be comfortable. You ask some people it's because I'm cheap. Uh, if you ask other people it's because I'm thrifty. I, I like to think of it more of that. Um, I kind of joke around and say I was thrift store before it was cool. But not really. Uh, it really is just because I grew up with that. If you are like, like a goth or emo person, you would wear like dark clothes. If you're like a happy person, I mean I won't say you wear bright clothes, but like it involves like like the team that you like. Like I like D Rose, so I wear like D Rose everything and it gives me joy. I think we get it thrown in our faces so much in magazines and TV shows that it's kind of like brainwashed. Like this is cute, this is nice, this is what you should have. I go shopping, I look at something that I feel is going to cover everything that it needs to cover, and I look at the price, and if it does its job, then I buy it. To pick clothes out, the, the process I go through is pretty simple. I look at what I currently have, I look kind of where I'm missing things or where I'd like things. Um, if, it, if it seems comfortable, then I'll buy it. Kids are kids. They have no control over what they buy. Their parents have to use their budget into what they can afford for them. And I think it's one of the most unfair things for kids to get bullied about what their parents can and cannot afford. I don't think anybody should be bullied for any reason. Uh, when I was a kid, I was bullied for a lot of things, fashion included. If I see shoes out there that are more than $30, I tend to or just immediately shy away from it regardless.
Breaking news, a fight just broke out at Allen High School with four students injuring cops. Warning, the video you're gonna watch is graphic. Some students didn't feel safe at the time of the violence, and this can have an impact on their learning and also their future. Building 21 Students has made a documentary about school safety. Hope you enjoy. Here's a building 21. What is the security team going to do? I think we're going to continue to enforce policies that we have to make sure things are working in order, like the uniform policies, cell phone policies, to make sure that you guys are focused and coming to school to learn. How was school safety when you were a child? How does it compare to today's safety? So when I think back to my childhood, I think, uh, and I think to safety specifically, I don't necessarily... Uh, ever feel that I was uncomfortable or unsafe in school, uh, which is great. Right now, what I see as the biggest difference is social media, and I see that there are a lot of things that occur on social media that um, that that create conflicts amongst peers at school, and it's it's a difficult thing to manage as a uh, school leader and as a staff, right? There's a lot of bullying that goes on on there and students uh, Could really avoid those things and I find that to be the biggest difference from when I was a, a student um, How does Muhlenberg keep your school safe? Um, Muhlenberg has a blue light system in which all around campus there are blue lights scattered across the campus and they have um, P.O. boxes around them. So if you want to go, if you feel ever feel unsafe, um, you can just go up to one of them, put there, it's like a call button, you push that and the campus security will be there in about, I'd say, at least um, 30 seconds. How important is school safety to you? I think it's extremely important. Um, I think that uh, um, it's, you know, it's a big problem in our, in our country right now deciding how to keep schools safe um, but with school shootings and everything and I think that uh, uh, it's school should be one place where you can feel safe you can feel safe to open yourself up and to learn new things and to try new things and um, so I think it's extremely important I'm John Walker and that's what we have for today thank you and have a good night Project Silk has brought many new opportunities to the LGBT plus community. They help us to figure out the questions that we've been asking ourselves for years and no one had an answer to. And now that we have something like this to give us services, I feel like people like us can learn more about ourselves and be able to express ourselves to the full potential that we can. Growing up, I had many questions just like a normal teenager. How to I gonna make boys like me or what should I say to a boy and no one can answer that because no one was comfortable um, having that conversation with me but now we have something like this that I can all the questions that I ever had I could ask and they'll welcome me with open hands and I feel like this is just the beginning of an improvement for the whole United States and even the world so this is just the first steps to changing our lives and the lives of everybody in need so this is why Project Silk was created to meet the needs of the people that needed them 
from the LGBT community. Well, LGBT people historically have not been treated equally because in America, the laws that were created in this country were not created to treat us equally. We've had to fight really hard to make sure that we're treated equally under the law. Well, it's not about being fair as much as it's about making sure that our voices are heard. And so for uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender people um, you know, throughout America, it, we need to make sure our voices are heard. And as long as our voices are heard, I believe that our message wins. The message that says that LGBT youth should be treated fairly by their schools and their families, or the message that says that you know, LGBT people should be treated equally by their workplaces or in their communities, I think that those messages win. So it's okay that we have to fight because as long as our voices are heard, we, we can usually be successful. So I came out when I was about 19 years old. Uh, my father passed away when I was young, so it was just my mom and I. And I came home from college uh, for Thanksgiving and I was like, oh, this is a good time to tell my mom. Um, you know, she didn't take it as well as I would have liked at first, but with time and with working with her and telling her how important my sexuality was to me, um, she came around because she just wants to love me, right? Like, she just wants me to be happy and she wants to love me. So um, it took time for her to see that this is really part of me and part of who, what makes me me. Well, I want to hear what every child would like to hear in his acceptance. Um, I came out at the age of 11 and like same case as Kim was, um, my, parent, um, my father died at a young age when I was younger and I was only my mother and I. And her reaction was what I expected due to the fact that she was very religious. So she was very not accepting of me and it was very tough and all I wanted from her is just her love and I wanted her to trust that I know that I was making the right decisions in my own life. But overall, she came around and she started seeing me for who I was and my relationship with her is only improving throughout the years.